All right. This is an impromptu video. <laughs> ah. All right, spoiler alert. I am going to give my personal fan theory on uh, what's happening with the Marvel Universe and the, the, I'm sorry, Marvel Cinematic Universe and the Infinity Stones. Um, so, I was a comic book guy. Uh, when you're a geek or a nerd, you, uh, you have your own specialization or your things you're interested in. It's kind of like being a, a sports guy. You might be really into football and baseball, but not care about hockey or soccer or whatever. Uh, my thing as a nerd, as a geek, as part of the geek culture, was uh, comic books. More than anything else was comic books. Growing up. I've got thousands of comic books that I still have, most of which are in their own individually wrapped polypurethane, whatever, poly, the little plastic bags. Yeah, I'm really making a case for myself. But it's not in the collecting, it's in the reading and the fan theories that I got. Uh, that's where my my geekitude comes in. Right now I, I read a lot of Girl Genius, which is an online comic by Phil and Kaya Folio, and I highly recommend it, girlgenius.com. Go read it. It's arguably the best comic ever written. They update three days a week, one page per day, per three days, uh, three pages per week. Back to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You've had your spoiler warning. <sighs> this is about the Infinity Stones and understanding why the build up to this point. The Infinity Stones are started in Iron Man, which is the first movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And you're saying, Infinity Stones in Iron Man? I remember reading and watching that in 2008. There weren't any Infinity Stones there. Nope. But there was the Arc Reactor. The Arc Reactor is the greatest uh, energy-making device that Howard Stark was able to create before he was killed by Obadiah, uh, Obadiah Stane. Technically, he was killed by Winter Soldier, but Obadiah Stane commissioned the, the kill. Uh, go watch Iron Man 2008. Uh, excellent film. I wouldn't say it's the best film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but it's close. It's one of the best. It's changed the way we did uh, superhero movies. Um, okay. So uh, we're, we're there. And you're saying, okay, well, okay, Howard Stark did that. Who cares? Howard Stark... What does he know about the Infinity Stones? Well, Howard Stark had one. He was studying the Tesseract. He had the Tesseract. Go back and watch Captain uh, Captain America, the first Avenger. Who gets the Tesseract at the end of the movie? Howard Stark. Howard Stark is the king of clean energy by creating the Arc Reactor, the thing that they lose, they lose money on, according to Obadiah Stane. Um, but then... <sighs> Before Captain America came out, we had Iron Man 2, where Iron Man gets all the notes. Tony gets all the notes from his father, or the notes that S.H.I.E.L.D. gives him. Maybe they're not all the notes. And I also theorize that other people worked on it over the years, so I'm assuming S.H.I.E.L.D. gave him all the notes. So he gets all that, and he creates the triangular new, um, the new element. And all through Iron Man 1 and 2, Tony is constantly changing out the arc reactor, uh, energy thing. Well, in Iron Man 2, he creates an energy based off of the technology his father had. Or the notes, the theoretical ongoing notes that his father had. He creates a new element. And that new element is a limitless source of energy that gives him power much like the Tesseract gave power in Captain America the First Avenger. So, I would even argue... I'm going to argue that he actually created something of the same substance, the same substance as an Infinity Stone. And I am arguing that for a couple of reasons. Reason number first appearance in the Marvel Universe is in Avengers. Loki is taking over people with the Mind Stone. The Mind Stone is in, the jet, is in, the, is in his staff. We don't know that yet, but it is. The Mind Stone does not work on Tony. He's the only person who doesn't work on it. And it taps on his uh, little chest thing there. The What I would consider a 
a proto uh, infinity stone. It's made out of the same substance as the infinity stones. That's my theory. That's why it doesn't work. The infinity stones can't. Uh, it's harder to use the infinity stones to manipulate each other. We also find out in Infinity War from Ultron that, not Ultron, what's his name there? Paul Bettany's character. Green, red face, marries Wanda the Scarlet Witch in the comics. Oh, Vision. So we find out, <laughs> yeah, that was rough. We find out from Vision that he's been studying um, the mind gem that's been here, but he says, I have been studying these, he doesn't say I've been studying the mind gem, he said it, from my study of these things. So, he's got access to all of Tony's notes. He would be the one to know that what Tony did, or be able to compare what Tony did to the composition of the Mind Stone. So that's just a hint. I could be wrong on this, but it doesn't seem likely. Uh, there's no other infinite energy source known in the Marvel Universe. No, that's probably not true. <laughs> if you give me a minute, I'm sure I'll think of something. Like the cosmic cues, but those are awful explanations. Lots of awful explanations on the cosmic cube. I don't even like what Steve Englehart did with it, and I love Steve Englehart. So, his run on the Silver Surfer is the run on the Silver Surfer. Jim Starlin took it over and started all this... Did you know that the Infinity Stones were called the Soul Gems? Or the Infinity Gems were called the Soul Gems before uh, 1991 or 1990 or whenever it was? Jim Starlin came back to Marvel Comics and uh, they gave him Steve Englehart's book, Silver Surfer. One of Steve Englehart's books. And uh, he was happy to give it to him because Jim and Steve are friends. But <laughs> Steve is this amazing creative force in... Uh, in uh, especially Marvel Space. Every every cool thing we've done with Marvel Space has been him. He also wrote, if you don't know who Steve Englehart is, he wrote the comics that the first Batman movie, the 1999 Batman movie with, not 1999, 1989 Batman movie with Michael Keaton, he wrote the comics that was based off of. He wrote the comics that The Dark Knight Rises, I'm sorry, that The Dark Knight with Heath Ledger was based off of. He wrote those. If you go back and read his Dark Detective series, I think they're graphic novels now, but don't quote me on that. These are the plots. They changed some characters, but these are the plots with Silver St. Cloud that uh, the Batman movies, the, the best Batman movies have been based off of. And he's done a ton of stuff that they, they take his storylines more than any other author. Him and Aaron Williams, who writes... Uh, Disney loves stealing Aaron, Aaron Williams' ideas. He writes uh, PS238. It's, a, uh, it's an online comic book. It was a regular comic book, but he went all online a few years back about a school for uh, uh, children uh, with superpowers. Sky High and The Incredibles steal ideas straight out of Aaron Williams' uh, storylines and plots. But we're talking about the Infinity Stones. Borrow. They borrow storyline straight out of Eric Aaron Williams stuff. Oh. Infinity Stones. I'm talking about the Infinity Stones. The last thing I left off on was Tony created a Infinity Stone. That's a pretty big fan theory right there. Another fan theory. Odin had them all, and Odin used them all. And his gauntlet, the, f you've, the fake ones on display, the fake, I don't know have the camera far back enough to see all my hand gestures. The fake one was on display in Thor Ragnarok, but I think he actually had his own uh, Infinity Gauntlet that he used. Here's my reason why. This is my fan theory, and a lot of, a lot of this is conjecture. Um, but it's based on... It's based on... Uh, it's based on the movies, so here we go. More than the comics, I try to base as little as possible on the comics when I'm making fan theories. Um, they're two entirely separate universes, uh, Vision and Tony and everybody. All of these characters are very different from the comics than from the movies. So, Infinity Stones. Odin had them all, or at least most of them. I don't know if you ever got the Soul Gem because of the price. The price was still very high, and was he willing to pay that price? I don't know. 
Who would he have killed off? Maybe one of his brothers. <sighs> anyway. He definitely had the space gem, the reality gem, and the space gem, the reality gem, and probably the time gem. He may have had more than that. So we know that Odin, from the first Thor movie, we know that Odin used to be a conqueror. And Thor's desire is to be a conqueror like his father at the beginning of the movie. And Odin wants no part of that. We're never really told why, except Odin has learned that, and we don't know why or how he's learned this, but Odin has learned that governing wisely is better than conquering. We also know that he's the all-father and the ruler of the Nine Realms. So this is my basic theory on what happened with Odin. Because this, this isn't based off Norse mythology, this is based off the MCU. Uh, in this, the Norse gods are not gods, not really gods. They're aliens. They're aliens who have incredible genetic potential and power. Um, they're much more than mortal humans. They live eons, thousands upon thousands of years. So I don't know when all this happened. Uh, I'll leave that up to the the uh, guys at the MCU, the creative team. Um, if you're looking for a writer, let me know. So Odin goes off, and he's a conqueror with his daughter Hel. Hela, whatever they ended up calling her. Hel is the Norse name. Hela, I think, is what they call her in the movie. It's on Netflix now. I should watch it again. But why would I watch a Marvel movie twice? Um, I've only seen most of these once, by the way. Uh, don't need to watch them twice. They're very, they really get their points across very clearly. Um, hell. So he goes out conquering, probably with his wife, probably with hell, maybe with others. Well, he had armies. And he collects the soul stones along the, sorry, the infinity gems along the way. Um, while he does this, he becomes incredibly powerful and probably conquers, this is probably before the Kree and the Skrull empires start. This is ages ago. Um, takes over galaxies. Not just one galaxy, not just two galaxies, because neither the Kree nor the Skrull are from the Milky Way. The Kree are from, this is from, again, I'm taking this from the comics. The Kree are, they're all, they're all from the local group, but the Kree are from the Lesser Ma Magellan Cloud, if I remember that correctly which is, uh, has about 80, 80, 80 billion stars in it, 80 million stars, I forget. Um, and the scrolls are from the Andromeda Galaxy, which is, depending on who you ask and what time you ask it at and how much research we've done, the same size or twice the size of the Milky Way. Um, Xandar, uh, who we've seen in... Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1 and referenced in Volume 2 and in Infinity War. Xandar in the comics is in the Andromeda Galaxy. They are at... On and off in the comics, they are at war with the Skrulls. A defensive war on Xandar's part for the most part. Um, kind of a cold war, often. So anyway, putting all that aside or bearing that in mind. Before all of these cultures and empires and whatnot is Odin and Asgard. Asgard goes out, proves itself to be the baddest of the bad. For whatever reason, Odin has his change of heart. He retreats to the nine planets of the nine realms. My theory is that those nine planets contain uh, the beings with the best genetic potential or he creates his own little mini fortress, and among other things he does there is he protects the Infinity Stones. I would, I would guess that he put most of them on Earth, except for the Soul Gem. Um, he puts them on Earth. And he puts them on Earth because humans cannot touch an Infinity Stone without being killed. And if the uh, Midgard is under... Midgard is another name for Earth is the Asgardian name for Earth. If Midgard is under the protection of Asgard, no one, no aliens will come to Midgard to get the Infinity Stones. Whether other... I don't know if any other aliens can hold an Infinity Stone besides 
Uh, actually, we're told most of them can't. Um, the gods can, and Peter Quill can hold one for a moment because he's <laughs> he's the son of ego. Oh, there's so much I would love to do with that storyline. What a brilliant, brilliant choice making him the son of ego. Anyway, uh, by the way, he still has that power inside of him. The whole reason ego lied to him repeatedly. So he's an unreliable narrative. He's an unreliable source of information. So in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, ego tells him that without him, without ego, Peter has no power. But ego sought him out because Peter has innate power. Think about that. He is, theoretically, um, Peter Quill has the potential, Star-Lord has the potential to become a planet in his own right. And just like with Ego, it will probably take him millions upon millions of years to figure out how to do it without someone guiding him. Or that he even can. But I don't think he is mortal. Uh, I think he's weak, comparatively. But I think he is like defined as a celestial like Eo himself is a celestial, which celestial in the comics means a specific race of super-powered, almost Galactus-level um, powered beings. Ego was not considered a celestial in the comics. I don't know if he is now. You know, continuity went out the window in 1989, and it is gone. Um, yeah, so... Odin hides the Infinity Stones on Earth because no one on Earth can theoretically use them. No one, no other aliens are going to come to invade the Nine Realms and deal with Odin, who theoretically has access to at least some of the Infinity Stones. Um, and then I think he runs into problems. I think it's after the Conquering. I'd have to go back and watch Thor 2. I don't have a copy of it. I'd have to borrow it from somebody or, hey, buy one. Um... I don't remember if the Dark Elves get their, get the reality gem before or after Odin conquers them. I think it's before. I think that's where he gets it from. But he may have also given the different gems because maybe he didn't have his own gauntlet. Maybe he used all the gems by having people in his army from the Nine Realms who could use the gems for him in conjunction with each other. That, that's an interesting idea that he had to learn how to use the gems. Um, anyway. That is the main basis of the theory. That all the gems were on Earth because they were safe there, because no one would go there and get them, or risk the wrath of Odin. The other thing is that Thanos doesn't start collecting the gems directly until Odin is dead. Now that is key. That is, that is very key. Odin dies in Thor Ragnarok. Thanos, while he's trying to collect the gems subtly, knows that Odin is one person who can stop him. Odin can stop him. Odin has done it before. Everyone is still afraid of him. Um, the Kree, theoretically, the Kree Empire and the Skrull Empire is drastically more powerful than Thanos is. Even though Thanos is off destroying planets, the Shatari, Shatari, however you pronounce it, are uh, are not generally considered to be. No, this is from the comics, and it's from the Ultimate Universe. I don't know. I don't really trust the Ultimate Universe. They you, they pull stories from both universes, and they do whatever the hell they want in the MCU, and they do a great job, so I like it. Um, quality is what we're always looking for. Quality, and people will talk about continuity. Um, some people love talking about continuity, how important it is. I'm a big continuity guy. Other other comic geeks are like, No, man, continuity ruins stories. They're so worried about these little details that... that ruins a good story. They can't write a good story with all these little details. And my counter... Whoa, just stepped on the cat. Why is the cat underneath my feet? So, sorry, cat. He's not hurt. He's fine. It was just the end of his tail. Um, and he's back under my feet. Why are you... I love you too, cat. So anyway, the thing about continuity is to not is to think of it as history. It is the history of the character. If you ignore the history of the character, you don't and the story and the world, you don't have a world anymore. You don't have a story. Without history, there's no story. 
So while small continuity errors to me are not a big deal, um, you forget something that was written 30 years ago, a minor plot point written 30 years ago or an off, off the cuff saying from even five years ago or last year when you said, when you were just filling in dialogue and you're like, Oh, let's have a, let's have a Reed Richards say uh, blah, blah, blah about the scroll. And then it doesn't come true. Or, uh, Reed Richards isn't in the MCU yet, but you get the idea. Those are minor continuity errors. It's not a big deal. That's what the no prize, that's why Stan Lee and the guys at Marvel created the no prize. The no prize is the uh, idea that if you spot a continuity error and you come up with uh, you come up with an answer to it, you write it in and you send it to Marvel back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. Though they stopped giving them out when I started applying for them. I must have sent in like 10 letters, and that was a lot of money for me. Less than, what was it, 19 cents a stamp at the time? That was money. And then the envelope, I had to buy the envelope. Anyway, I must have sent in like 10 of them. That's like a buck. That's like two, maybe three dollars right there. <laughs> I didn't have a lot of money as a kid. No, I ain't really. Um, spent it all on comic books. So, I never got an answer either. Um, the no prize was given out as an award for fixing a continuity error. Your your answer got published in the uh, in the letters pages of that particular comic book, and they sent you a uh, a little form letter and a sticker in the mail, just a sticker, like an Incredible Hulk sticker or an X Men sticker or something, something they had lying around the office. It was a no prize. If you won it, you got no prize. So <laughs> there you go. Um, those little continuity errors are for uh, the no prize. Big continuity errors are unforgivable. Um, you're ignoring major parts of history. Uh, you got to make sure that these things make sense because this is this is the story of the character of of these of this world, this imaginary fictional world. You need to get the story to be consistent, to make sense with each other because this is it. This is like. Some of these errors that they've made in the comics over the years were things like uh, be the equivalent of uh, getting wrong who won major wars. They, uh, when they wrote the invasion storyline with the Skrulls, they they ignored you know, what forty years of history, forty years of storyline with the Skrulls. They picked and chose what they wanted to use instead of going through and making sure it was all consistent and. Uh, ignored a lot of history. I was not happy with that. Um, it's, it's not happy with that. I didn't buy it. I, I don't recommend it. You've got some brilliant storylines and you, you're not using them? That's awful. So, when my rant goes on to, what am I at right now? 23 minutes. <sighs> Thor, uh, Thanos waited until he was using operatives before um, what's his name there? Odin died, including Odin's own son. One of the most brilliant things he did was send Loki to Earth to get, without telling him he had a, an Infinity Stone, he sent Loki to Earth to get the other Infinity Stone, which would give him two. I don't know where he got the mind gem from. That's not told. I don't have a theory on that. There's no info whatsoever on that. But it's brilliant, because Odin is not going to uh, punish... What's his name there? Loki. He doesn't even take the staff with him. Thor doesn't even take the staff with him when he goes back to Asgard. No one knows the mind gem is there. Thanos may have tossed away. People are like, why is he always throwing away so power, uh, infinity gems? He didn't throw away. He only, the only one he gave away was the mind stone. He gave away the mind stone to get the space gem. Using the one agent he knew, his enemy, the one man who could stop him, who could definitely stop him, wouldn't wouldn't... Ah, I, I lost my train of thought here. He gives Loki the gem because Loki has an innate protection from Odin. And Odin is the person he is afraid of. That's one of the key parts of this theory is that fear may be the wrong word. Cautious about doesn't knows that Odin can stop his plans. It is after Odin dies that Thanos steps forward and gets the Power Stone from... He didn't give the Power Stone away, by the way. Um... If you go back and watch uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1, Ronan the Accuser, which, if 
if there's one thing I am disappointed with in the MCU is their use of villains. Um, Ronan shouldn't have died. Ronan, Ronan was an amazing character in the comics with tons of potential. But anyway, they give away... Uh, he doesn't give it away. He sends Ronan to... Um, he sends Ronan to get the Power Stone, and in return for the Power Gem, he will support Ronan's fracture, uh, faction's bid for taking over the Kree Empire. Um, that was the deal. Ronan go, rena uh, he goes back on the deal, and uh, Ronan gets the Power st st uh, Stone and loses it. Ronan gets the Power Stone and loses it to Quill. Quill holds it, they leave it on Xandar. The story of how how he destroyed Xandar, how he beat Xandar and reduced the population by 50%. I would love to see that, because I don't think the Chitari could do it. Um, must have been... I, I, I really theorized that it was a strike team of Thanos with his guys, his hand team or whatever there. Um, I stopped reading comics. Uh, I stopped paying for comics and reading comics long before... Long before... Uh, Thanos had his hand there. That's a relatively recent addition to the mythos of comic books. Um, wasn't there in uh, 91 when they wrote the Infinity Gauntlet, which is what the Infinity War movie is based off of, is the Infinity Gauntlet storyline. Anyway, I think they went in as a special strike force. They used the Chitauri army as a diversion. They went in as a strike force, got the power gem. Thanos knew how to use the power gem. And, uh... Yeah. He used it to defeat the Xandar, the Xandarians, Xandars, the Xandari. -I. I have no idea. It's been forever since I've read a Nova comic. Anyway, the living computers of Xandar. I also don't think most people, most aliens in the MCU space universe know about the Infinity Stones. Uh, I think it's very rare knowledge. So, there you go. Yeah, I guess that's it. Sorry for the long-winded rant. I should probably put down something more concise in the comments section. I probably won't, though. But I might. Enjoy!